to praise God because God truly is my everything. That's my testimony. I don't know about you, but I praise God for that. I thank God for each and every one of you that pressed your way out today. It's a pretty day and it's a good day to praise the Lord. I'm so thankful to God for our pastor on today. I believe God has given him a word just for us. And so without further ado, let's say amen for Pastor Bland. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. I feel very fortunate, uh, and that's just my personal testimony. You should have the same testimony, and that is I feel like, uh, because I have the best wife in the world. Uh, you know, and I know Tyrone did beg, beg to differ, and you should because you have a wonderful wife. One of the benefits, and many benefits, good morning. One of the beautiful benefits of living a spiritual life is that you don't have to be you. But you'll never live a spiritual life as long as you think that you are all that. As long as you think that you can love, you think that you can be unselfish, you think that you can overcome, then you will never avail yourself of God's help and his assistance. Uh, for the pain, the way we got in the situation that we in. And you must realize that every human being that comes here now comes here corrupt. The best looking, they still corrupt. The smartest, they still corrupt. And they're corrupt because they are the seed of Adam. Uh, when Adam uh, went along with his wife, uh, it corrupted the seed, and every child since then has had sin, Brother Moss, in him. Every person after that uh, can say what they're not going to do and find themselves doing it. So then God gave Israel a law, a mirror to show them that you wrong just like everybody else. You see Brother Edgar Jr., as long as you don't see nobody's wrong but other folk, you never get no help. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put that another way. Long as you don't do nothing but take my clothes to the wash, to the, to the wash your clothes never, let me just make it a little plainer. You got to take your clothes and put them in the washer in order for them to get clean. And so then, do not lie, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not covet. All of these are simply rules just to show you you can't keep them. You know, well, I'm not as bad as the other person. Bad, just bad. You know, you may have a shirt on that's not as stinking as the other person, but stinking, just stinking. Both of y'all need cleansing. And so then, Lady Deborah, just like you were saying in the Lord's Academy, uh, the first step in living a better life is self-honesty. When I can see myself for really who I am, and that's the reason that Jesus said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Turn, if you will, to Ephesians. Now, I was advised not to preach this morning because I've had uh, extensive dental work done on Thursday. I was in the chair for six hours. Um, it's a year-long process, Brother Rashad, uh, to improve myself. And um, I wasn't led in the spirit. I feel like I can talk for 25 or 30 minutes, and I feel like that what God has to say to us is important. I don't feel like I'm gonna do myself no harm, and I don't believe I'm gonna do you any harm. So if you will, turn to Ephesians, the second chapter. Another thing I know, Brother Edgar, is that you can't get caught up on where you are. You always have to, see, God is a God of hope. 
And you always have to believe and know that all things are working together for good. And that's the reason some people will sleep on you because they see you in your present situation. And they don't see you where God is taking you. You see, God is a God where that you know that everything is working together for your good and every bit of this, Brother Lacey, is conforming me to the image of Christ and taking me somewhere that I've never even seen before. Uh, the Bible said that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Ephesians 2 and 8. Here the Bible says, for by grace are you saved, are reconciled, are brought back into right relationship with God. It has nothing to do with you. I have serious doubts that you can even make a decision to be saved. I have serious doubts that you can sit there on that pew and I preach and you make a decision, I want to be saved. Because the Bible says that you are not born of the will of man. <sighs> if you look at Ephesians 2 and go back to the first verse, the Bible says there, go back to the first verse, and you have he quickened. Brother Rashad, that is a old English term for made alive. Wasn't it a wonderful day when you realized that you were eating, sleeping, working, marrying, doing all kind of things, but you actually was dead? You ever got everything that you thought you wanted, had it, you got money, you got the car, you got the woman, you got all this stuff that you thought you wanted, and you sitting there going, is this all it is to it? But the Bible says that, and you have it quickened. Why you? Why, why, why you? You see, God is love. <laughs> I'm gonna put some of y'all up on game if you hear me. If you can find somebody that loves you. You see, when people love you, Brother Rashad, they don't have to find nothing in you. See, 99% of the people that's dealing with you, they're dealing with you because they have identified some type of resource in you that they need. And when you run out or when you get tired of them using you, they throw at you. They walk up, they go. They're not even thinking about you no more. You should not wonder, well, what? look what all I did. Look what I did. They never, lo they never loved you. They used you. But when somebody loves you, it has nothing to do with you. Jesus told, give me Deuteronomy 7. Move there. Go down. Which verse is it, Deborah? Seven and seven. Look what God's talking to Israel. He said, the Lord did not set his love upon you, not choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of people. I'm gonna take my subject right now and I'll move on. Uh, good news is you've never been here before. Uh, 11 o'clock, I'm going to be at home. I don't know where you're going to be. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, say, ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? See, ain't nothing like being around somebody you ain't got to be scared. Half the folks that you're around, you say, well, you know, I can't say that around them because if I say that, they're going to get mad or, or they're going to walk off or they're going to leave. And see, uh, I'm like Bishop Jake. Bishop Jake said, I have the gift of goodbye. I got the gift of goodbye. I promise you, I'll help you pack. You won't leave, 
Because I found out this right here, Brother Moss. If somebody want to leave you, you need to let them go. Because you run up behind them and instead of doing this, instead of doing that, when you get through, not only are they going to leave, they're going to talk about you when they leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I count my losses. You see, they that loved you, ain't gonna, you ain't got to never worry about them going nowhere. You see, that's how they mess me up about God. Y'all, see, y'all made God like y'all. If you don't pay your tithes, if you don't come to church, if you don't go to BTU, uh, if you don't help with the building fund, if you don't get this money right here for the pastor's anniversary, if you see, y'all had so many ifs on my relationship with God. You see? And that's reason I'm glad to be over here. We just read. He said, you saved by grace. You ain't had nothing, ain't nothing you got that God. You know what? A beautiful thing is when you're in a relationship with somebody that don't need you. And that's the reason. Uh, it was Jerry Malone, the undersecretary to Rodney Slater, Rodney Slater was the Secretary of Transportation uh, up under uh, Bill Clinton. Jerry Malone, very smart guy, country as he want to be, but he's smart as a whip out of Earl, Arkansas. And when I first started practicing law, Edgar, he came to me, he told me, he said, Vandal. I said, what? He said, when you find somebody, leave them where you find them. Man, I thought that was a cold thing. I thought, man, is what you, but you know what? 30 years later, I can see what he's saying. You see, Brother Mashad, uh, when you find somebody that's broke, they where they supposed to be. Their practices and what they do with money, they waste their money, then they want to spend your money. <laughs> you, you find somebody 40 years old, ain't got nowhere to stay. Ain't no drugs or nothing. You want to take them in, Put them in a place, uh, take them down, dress them, and, and, and do all that. All you done done is just dressed up a pig. <laughs> and as soon as you can get away from you, they're going to get right back into, into the mud. God says, to Israel, Israel was his people, God said, you got it twisted. You got it twisted. You see, folks that really love you, you ain't got to take them to them. Folks that really love you, you ain't got to pay I talked to a lady yesterday. She said, well, she broke up with the guy, but she still, well, I'm still paying his insurance on his truck, and, 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 and he on my, on my phone bill. And I'm getting ready to tell him that you got to get your own and whatever. I didn't say a word, because I know where your mind is at. You see, it's possible for you to love somebody and they don't love you. You, you need to understand that. It's just when you love, the, the, the object of love has nothing to do with the, with the person that's loving them. You don't have to be lovable in order to be loved. Somebody just loves you and God says, I just love you. That take a whole lot of weight off of me right now. Not everybody, just somebody tell them, ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? Y'all had me walking around with eggshells with God. I, I really had told God, I said, you know what? You forget about me, because I'm going to tell you what. Ain't no telling what I might do. As a matter of fact, I likes it. What I'm doing? So y'all talk about sin, like, oh, you know, I hate I did this, and I hate I did. I was grinning all the way the way I was going. The only time I heard about sin was when consequences came down the rain. Other than that, now what I didn't like, I wasn't doing it no way. All men and little children were safe around me. But other than that, y'all show sure look funny. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm going to tell you what, I didn't come here to make no number today. I come here to try to get some help. I want to live a good life. And I know I come to a place I understand that if the Lord don't help me, I ain't going to be able to stand the storm. Uh-huh. And so God tells Israel, he said, uh, it wasn't the fact that you were so great. Because you didn't have nothing. And that's the reason, Mother, it's so sad when you have folks like basketball players, NBA players and everything, the little nappy head girl that loves you when you was in college, you know, and, when that, and all that. Then when you get that signing contract, then you go get that, you know, that beautiful woman. That, that, and hey, ain't even hers, no way, but it's hanging all down here. She can't tell you nothing no more. You go in and get it, but you know what? 
the person who wanted you when didn't nobody else want you. When you didn't have nothing, that's it, that's wisdom right there. Don't forget the bridge that brought you over. That's what hurt God so bad about Israel. It hurt him. What did I do? Where is mom? I planted you a noble vine. And when I came back for fruit, all I got was just, wow. You left me. I brought you out of Egypt. I took you by eagle's wings. I fed you in the wilderness. <laughs> Your shoes didn't even wear out or nothing. And I, I brought you into a land of milk and honey. You, you, you ate from trees that you didn't even plant. You houses that you didn't even build. I took care of you. Then when you got over here, you went to horn after other gods. What did I do? He bro they, bro they broke his heart. You see, I'm not, let me say this right here. <sighs> Can't nobody break your heart if you don't love them. The only person to break your heart is the one, but I'm gonna tell you something. You know, if you got the capacity to love, your heart gonna be broken. Because everybody you love don't love you. <laughs> but I want you to know something, God ain't never broke nobody's heart. Because <laughs> God is love. And what that looks like, Mr. Moss, is, is that when you turn your back, and walk away from him. And you finally do get some walking around sense. Like the prodigal son, the Bible says he came to himself. He said, in my father's house, I ain't never had to worry about nothing to eat. In my father's house, I ain't never had to worry about folks using me up and then walking away. He said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rise and go back to my father's house. Now watch this, Brother Bashad. The problem is, is that going back means you got to take your little pride down. Because when you left, let me just get down to Elaine. When you left, uh, you had your behind up on your back. Uh, uh, when you left, you were talking about what you ain't gonna put up with no more. Give me mine and let me go. Y'all want to stay around here. Y'all don't know what's going on or nothing. It's a great big world out here and bright lights and everything. I'm getting ready to go over here. But when I was sitting around Chicago Mill, when Chicago Mill used to be there, I was back in my drinking days, drinking wine and everything around there with them guys. And uh, one guy was talking about he will not take no whooping no more, talking about when his mama used to whoop him. He said, I ain't gonna take no whooping more. One of them had got a little high and he said, he's a Chicago, Chicago meal whooping you every day. <laughs> you talking about what you ain't gonna take no whooping. Life! Thank God, look at somebody, not everybody, look at somebody and say, I thank God for my whooping. I thank God for my whooping. Don't feel sorry for me, I need it, I need it! <sighs> every abandoned building that I slept in, every hit of dope that I took, uh, every tear that my mama cried, God in heaven know. God in heaven know I do everything I can in the world not to make my mama cry. But that dope, that dope made me make my mama cry. But every tear was needed in order to remove my pride where I would go back to who loved me. And so God says here, I say, I, I, it wasn't nothing about you that made me love you. Look what he says in verse 8, Brother Miles. He said, but because the Lord loves you. See, I can make it today. Somebody, they sing a song that say, um, I don't worry about tomorrow. For I know he that holds tomorrow holds my hand. You see, <laughs> y'all had me messed up because you was telling me, Brother Bland, unless you cross every T, unless you dot every I, unless you do this, unless you do that, then God ain't going to fool with you. You got to repent. You got to cry and snot and come and tell the Lord you ain't going to do it no more. Then you'll come back into the favor of God. I had no idea about God's real love. You know what? And if I had thought about it, mother, I, rabbit sense. Let me tell you something. I tell my but pain. I tell my boys, I don't love you like your mama love you. And they don't want to hear that. They go like, oh no, daddy, daddy, you did, you done done this for me, you done done this. I say, I know that. You didn't come out of me. I don't love you like your mama loves you. Mama love ain't none of God's love, Brother Shah, but it's so doggone close. 
It's so doggone close. Let me tell you something. I done done some of everything. Everybody wanted to turn it back. That boy ain't no good. He done what? But that woman sitting right there. That one right there? She tell my daddy, Bland, let's go get him. And Bland knew that if he didn't get up and come get him and everything, she would leave Bland before she would leave me. I'm talking about love, y'all. And you see, when you know somebody loves you, you got a different kind of confidence. See, these, these old uh, religious, uh, these old hypocritical, these old church folk, these old money grubbing, they ain't getting nothing but nickels and dying. They ain't getting nothing. Nothing. Before I left this morning, I got a cash out from somebody, and, and they said, uh, this is $200 for Manasseh Christian Fellowship. Well, that's $200. I'm going to put $200 in. We got $400 right there. Y'all ain't got to give a dime. Plus, all the bills paid already anyway. Ain't nothing here. We don't owe nobody, no, no nothing. But they spend all their time trying to get that money out y'all pocket. And I'm dying. I need to know the truth. And once you know, now, the biggest fool in the world is the one that run away from up under love. That's, that's a fool now. You up under somebody that loves you. And you leave somebody that loves you for somebody that don't care nothing about you. And that was God's frustration. He said, I love you. I, this is not conditional. This, this ain't dependent, but that ain't what I was taught, CJ, in church. You got some folks that ain't in church this morning because they're living up under condemnation. They think that what they did make them not worthy to come through them doors. That's the biggest foolishness in the world. That's the biggest foolishness in the world. God ain't got nothing against you. All right, that's all right. I got Bible on it. Give me Second Corinthians if I. The reason it can't change my mind, not but but Moss, is because I got Bible on what I believe. I ain't believing it because somebody told me. I read it and I read it with an understanding. And God has convicted my heart and He's let me know it's good news. The gospel is good news. The gospel is the fact that. I deserve death. I deserve eternal damnation. But he went to the cross in my place. And, and that's it. Ain't no if, no but. Well, suppose you do this. I suppose you, no, no, no. It's sealed. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. So before God saved me, Edgar, he already knew what I was going to do. I got on crack after I got saved. I ain't never had no crack before I got saved. After I got saved. Ain't no telling what you might do. But Paul says in Philippians, the third chapter, he said, we are not of those that have confidence in the flesh or have confidence in ourselves. <laughs> you see, God don't want us to believe in ourselves. He wants us to believe in him. Because self will fail you. Self will only take you so far. And then self will turn around and look at you, talking about what are we going to do now? There's another book that we read, Brother Bashar said, isn't it that self-reliance failed us? It failed us. But y'all, I'm mighty glad that it failed me. You see? Because I know some folks who they think they all let in a bag of chips. I know that folks that think, man, I got it going on, I'm doing this. But see, when I realize I can't depend on them, it's too many things and, and, and really what's pitiful when y'all run around talking about I done made up my mind. I mean, you done made up your mind many times you done made up your bed. <laughs> ain't mental thing. It don't mean nothing but I made up my mind. I ain't gonna do that no more. <clears throat> one thing I ever made up my mind about only, only drug was angel dust. I took some of that angel dust and I was like, Lord, thank you, I'm through. <laughs> Five and seventeen. Second Corinthians five and seventeen. The Bible says here, 
over in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. Uh, Romans 6 says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer the end? Know you not that as many as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. So then when I believe, you see, it's about three folks in here know the power of belief. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Wasn't no way you were supposed to come out of there. Wasn't no way you were supposed to move from where you were. You give your testimony and you talk to them, but they don't know. If they wasn't there, they, if they, they, they don't know just how powerful that you're believing something different, Brother Payne, change your life. You see, we down here in Phillips County. We around some of the most low, low-minded folks that ever live. These folks is not as a fruitcake. I was out of town, my wife called me, she sent me a video. Some nigga rode two, two o'clock in the morning riding a bicycle around in my, in my driveway. Then came back at six o'clock. When I got home yesterday, I went and talked to the neighborhood. I said, tell them don't do that no more. I want them to live. I want him to live. He on dangerous ground. I know he just don't know. The Bible says that once that we are in Christ, we are new creation. The Bible says, who have believed our report? I don't argue with nobody about the Bible. I don't sit around trying to make nobody believe nothing. The Bible says that he that cometh to God See, see my, my, all my honor and respect is with God. You got Negroes walking around thinking they, they, they got your whole life in their hand. They thinking that you can't get nowhere unless you come through them. But I don't believe that. Oh, no, 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 no. I serve the true and living God. I'm like David. See, 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 they didn't believe in David because, you know, they didn't know David. All they knew was he was keeping the sheep over there. They didn't even invite him in when they got ready to promote folk. Yeah. But God promoted him. Yeah. And you see, when God promotes you, then you don't owe nobody nothing. You ain't got to come back and lay that on you. Yeah, you did this for me. You did this for me. And when they begin to doubt David, David said, well, let me just give you my pedigree. He said, your servant was keeping his father's sheep. And a lion came. And not only that, a bear came. And your servant uh, slew them. And he said, if you give me an opportunity, I'll slay this uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> because nobody, see, it was what David believed. David said, can't nobody stand up against my God. Let me tell you something. God made a believer out of me. When God took me from nothing to something, when God took me from a bicycle to a S550 Mercedes, <laughs> When God took me for a raging food, I got good walking around since. I said, God, I know that you are God all by yourself. I've been to the place ain't nobody believed in me but my mom. Ain't nobody believed in me but my mom. Everybody else said, that boy is a fool. You ought to walk off. But you know what? We used to sing a song in the church I came from, but pain that said, love lifted me. Somebody loved me. Somebody loved me. Somebody saw something in me that couldn't nobody else see. That caused me to believe something different. And when I believe that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus, you see, it's certain things that I don't go for. It's certain things you can't take me with. It's certain things that I don't care who you are, I'll walk away from you. Because that's not who I believe that I am. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. No matter what I do, no matter how I act, no matter how I talk, I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. I used to make a mistake, Sister Sumter, and I'd be down for about five, ten days. I have to go to a hot revival, get myself souped back up. But today, by the grace of God, not because of, well, I, don't, I don't care. By the grace, I run up out of here. By the grace of God, I am. Yeah. Who I am. Yeah. 
And Sister Lisa, I'm not that because of who I made or because of my record. It's because of what God has done in my life. I, I am what I am. And so I'm almost through. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's not like y'all taught me. God didn't fix me up. God changed my heart. God changed my mind. Negro, please. You still thinking about the same thing you were thinking about, and you'll still do the stuff you were doing. God ain't changed your heart, nor you, man. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. Uh, and the Bible also says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Brother Rashad, God told me, say, if you believe something different, I'll change your life. If you believe something different, I'll change your life. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so then he says here, he says, uh, and all things of God, who have what reconciled reconciled sometime lady Deborah be doing the church books and it take her she she just sit up there just scratching her head ain't but four pennies i'd be wanting to tell her i said ain't but four pennies but it's got to be balanced it's got to be reconciled they somewhere we had to be reconciled back to god and God had to reconcile us. We could not reconcile us. Y'all kept telling me in church what I needed to do in order to get right with God. Well, Brother Bland, you got to get baptized. Brother Bland, you got to quit sinning. Brother Bland, you got to pay your tithes. Love don't work like that, y'all. Love don't work like that. In order to be reconciled back to somebody in a relationship, I got to believe you love me. Once I, oh, it bring tears to my eyes. Once I believe that you love me, we ain't nothing that's between us. And then the Bible says that God showed his love by leaving heaven, coming down, putting on flesh, dying on the cross, shedding his blood as payment because there was a redemption price. They had me doing all kind of foolish stuff, talking about some Lord, forgive me. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Sin has to be paid for with blood. First, it was the blood of bulls and goats, but it could not cleanse the conscience. But when God himself shed his blood. Then the Bible says that he perfected us forever. You are who you think you are. You are who you think you are. Sometimes I go against them tall building lawyers. Them lawyers is up there. It's about a hundred of them in the firm. Ain't nobody but me. Just one. I ain't got no secretary. Ain't nobody. I done typed up... <laughs> I done typed up the little pleadings and the brought everything, and I'm going up in there. Y'all got a hundred folks helping y'all. I whoop them like I own. <laughs> but Moss, I made up my mind a long time ago. If anybody gonna be intimidated, it's you. I don't fear man, beast, nor police. You can't sit up and talk to me and tell me you gonna whoop me. You got to whoop me. You got to whoop me. You got to throw some hands. You got to do something. You can't sit up and tell me what you're going to do. Bring it. It ain't the first one. I done took whooping before. But I know that my God is a rock and he's a fortress. And my God can save by many or by few. And Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible says he's reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Ain't that good news? God did not make us right through us. 
Since I've been at my Nassau Brothers Rashad, I've been able to take me out of the equation. I got sober the same way. <laughs> when I realized that no human power, including myself, could relieve me of this addiction that was killing me and killing every people that loved me. When I could admit that, that opened the door to God. That good God could and would if he was sought. If I quit looking to me and looking to the real help, then his grace, the Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in the time of need. God is waiting to help us, but we got to stop trying to help ourselves. Ain't that good news? When he told Abraham that he was going to have a child and Sarah was going to have a child, and Abraham peeked and looked and he saw Sarah's womb was dead. How are you going to have a baby out of a dead womb? The way you do that is, is because you're serving a God that calleth those things that are not as though they were. I'm God. I don't need no wood and lumber and nails in order to make a building. The Bible says that God stepped out on nothing but his word. And God said, let there be, and there it was. The, the only thing I have to do is I just have got to believe God. Because he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them. See him. I respect Brother Moss, all men. You ain't got to have no job for me to respect you. Whether you're in jail, whether you're in prison. When I go visit folks, they ain't in prison, jail and prison. I don't talk to them like some folks talk down to folks. Because I know only by the grace of God, it ain't me. I respect all men. But I don't worship no man. I don't worship them. I worship one, the true and the living God. Because can't nobody help me but God. What I got? I got two minutes. He says, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's our ministry, y'all. It's to tell people that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself. Getting baptized, paying your tithes, coming to church, not sinning. You ain't gonna stop sinning, but not trying to, you know, you're doing your best not to and everything, and you're thinking that's gonna get you to heaven, but that's not gonna get you to heaven either. You reconcile to God through Christ, through what Christ did upon the cross. What he did, reconcile. But the only thing, Tyrone, I have to believe it. If I believe it, then the Spirit of God baptizes me into the body of Christ. I'm a new creature. But I got an old mind. So my mind has to be renewed. Because, you know, we've been taught, don't nobody give you nothing for nothing. But the thing about it is, you can't give nobody nothing that don't need nothing you got. Run right here lying, talking about something, you taking up money for God. What God going to do with some money? What in the world he going to do with it? He ain't got no pockets. He says, last verse, it's good news. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. In order for you to be made right, God had to do it. You could not get yourself right. So God left heaven, put on flesh, did the work to bring you back to him. And the only thing he asks you to do is to believe it. But man is so caught up in himself, he'd rather believe that he can do it than God did it. Look what happened then. He said, not imputing. What does impute mean? I'm not counting them as yours. Ain't nobody sitting there paying don't see him. He said, but if you believe this gospel, I won't count your sins against you. It's called grace. And that's the reason that the Bible said that 
if any man be in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. I don't have the same mind I used to have. 25 years in the church, I'm saved, but I'm walking around with a condemned mind. I don't have no condemned mind now. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I do not feel inferior to any man. Any man, I do not feel. I, I respect you, but I don't feel inferior to you. And it's because of who I am in Christ. Not because of what I do, but who God made me. A new creation. I am the very righteousness. I'm just as right as God is. Why you say that? Because I gave him my sin, and he gave me his righteousness. Now, last point. No matter who you are, and no matter what you have, it does you no good unless you know it and you believe it. Clap your hands with the Lord.